Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the English translation of the Majlis of Hazar Monana Kamaru Zama Saab Damat Barakat to whom which took place on Friday, the 25th of Safar, 1444, corresponding with the English date 23rd of September 2022. Hazar Wala starts off this Majlis by reciting few ayat of Surah Al Muzammil. إِنَّ لَكَ فِي النَّهَارِ سَبْحًا طَوِيلًا وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ فَاتَّخِذْهُ وَكِيلًا وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُونُونَ وَهْجُرُهُمْ هَجْرًا جَمِيلًا Hazim Mawlana Gangohi used to say that bring or give value towards your time. Don't wait for time when you are going to be free. That listen, I can't do this now. I can't do this now. Let me see when I can be completely free and then I will sit and do this ibadat or that is ibadat. Uh, that ibadat. Don't wait for that time. Has a gango, he writes in an answer to a letter of a salik saying that every day your duties and your works would increase. And one of the greatest weapons of shaitan is for a person to uh, delay. How many people delay their hajj? They delay their hajj and eventually they never ever perform their hajj. So many people say that they are going to the Buzruks and they delayed, they delayed, they never eventually then reach there. Kare Imroz, Bafarda, Makudaz, the work for today, don't ever delay it for uh, tomorrow. Don't ever delay it for tomorrow. Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say, so many people would say that uh, they're coming. Hazrat, we're coming. But when Ramadan would come, he would say, but all those people said they're coming, they never came. You know, Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, I asked him for nasihat and advice. Hazrat Maulana Kamru Zaman Sahib is saying that, and he, it just was towards the end, before he was now leaving for Hajj and at that time he gave me this nasihat Tan az kar amda bekar madar This body has come to do work Don't leave it futile and useless Dil az bayar amda bayar madar this, this heart has come for Allah don't leave it in such a way that it is without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Khaja Muhammad Masum used to say, I can't understand the heart of that individual in which the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absent. How is that person even alive or carrying on? Meaning they understood that the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a nourishment to the heart. So what a nasihat Hazar Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib gave. And in the very start of this matter, uh, in the very initial years, I asked Hazar Maulana Kamru Zaman Sahib, I asked Hazar Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, Hazar Wala says, but at that time, what can I say? Nobody even had that himmat and that courage to uh, ask him. And what was the nasihat that he gave me in the start? Har kuja pastist ab aja rawad. Every place that is low-lying, water would reach there. Meaning that the very first step of this path is where a person uh, annihilates himself, humbles himself, and when there is humbleness, then the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reach, just like how water would reach the low-lying areas. So how a person humbles himself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he humbles himself in front of the Ahlullah 
And I just told you what was the last nasihat and the first nasihat. Sheikh Abdul Haq, Muhaddid Dehlwi, his father was a very great person. Hazar Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to speak about Sheikh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Delvi and he used to also give preference to him. Many people only give the preference or think about the great works of Hazrat Mujaddid al Fethani, but Sheikh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Delvi was nowhere less. And when he gave a nasihat, rather when uh, his father gave nasihat to him. What did his father say? Abdul Haq, Mullah e Khushk Nabashi. Abdul Haq, my son, don't become a dry morvi. Rather become fresh. Be wet. You know, a person says that that person was so dry. We went to him, he couldn't even give us water. He couldn't even give us tea. So he gives Sheikh Farid some advices and he says to him, in his advice that always make sure that your zahir and your batin there is tawafuk both are the same ensure at all times that you have ikhlas and sincerity in your deeds and also istihzare adziyah keep in mind the rewards of your a'mal not this year that we have such a type of an attitude we do this or that or the other and then we say that there is no need for uh, jannah when the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood the need of Jannah and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Jannah, then who are we? Now tell me, are these nasihats and these advices only for Shaykh Farid? Is it for all of us? Most definitely for all of us. So two things here. We need ilm and amal as well. So two things, Hazrat Manana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say. One is tawazu, adopt humility. By means of it, your relationship with the makhluk will be rectified and adopt the wakkul, put your full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your ta'alluq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be uh, rectified. So jaza, the rewards Allah ta'ala will give us. Allah says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ Except for those who carry out good deeds, for them there will, they will be a never-ending reward. A person came to Hazrat Tanwi and just before that he asked for some 10 rupees. Nevertheless, after some time he goes on to say that uh, I don't need Jannah and this and that. I don't know what he started saying. So Hazrat Tanwi said, what did you just say? You know the 10 rupees that I gave you, give that back to me. You're a very undeserving person. You are in need of 10 rupees. You came for that. But your attitude is saying, you're in need. That's your halat. You're in need of 10 rupees. But when it comes to Jannah, you say you don't need Jannah. You're independent regarding that. Allahu Akbar. So in a time like this, where people are involved in collecting gold and silver. How can we term it? They are lost in the pursuit of dunya. At such a time, if a person is pursuing and looking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in his remembrance, then such a person has most definitely become successful and has succeeded. Such a person is an intelligent person. Such a person has surpassed all people. You know, there was a, a king and he sent a message that, listen, go into the kingdom and go and look for the most stupid person, the, the biggest fool of the whole lot and go and give him this walking stick. Nevertheless, people went. Eventually, they come to one Buzruk and they see the whole world is doing their thing. But this person is so lost in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They look at him. He's got nothing to do with the dunya. They say they can't be any bigger fool than this. So they take the stick and they say that the Bacha has given this year. It is for the most foolish person. So he looked at them. He said, yes, keep it, keep it, give it to me. And he kept it. Time passes. And the news of a very fatal sickness 
then reach the ears of this Buzruk. That the, that the king was now in his last phases of his life. So he stands up, he takes that stick and he goes. Now whether he sent this message through the guards or he passed it on to the king itself. I mean, the crux of it is this year. He comes and he gives that stick back. And people say, now what's this? He says, no, I've come to give the stick to the most deserving person because they can't be any person more foolish and more stupid than this king for such a major journey, for such a great journey to the akhirat to go and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has made no preparations whatsoever. Allahu Akbar. Therefore, فَإِذَا قُضِيَتِ salat. When the Salat is completed, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Then spread in the earth. وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Seek the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go and earn and do what you have to do in commerce, trade and dunya. Not a problem. But remember, together with that, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly so that you may become successful. So pursuing dunya, and going out into the world in commerce and trade. There is no prohibition for that whatsoever. But remember, we cannot ever do without the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so this particular surah is a very, very important surah and so much uh, in it. So the Hazrat Arifin, we are speaking now about Inna nashi'at al-layli hiya ashaddu wat'a wa aqwa muqila Undoubtedly waking at night, meaning for salah, is extremely difficult. Of course, it is most effective for controlling the nafs. So undoubtedly waking at night is extremely difficult and speech is most correctly spoken then meaning du'as recitation of al-quran because it is a time when one is free from all other disturbances so the arifin say that the tahajjud guzar that person who's punctual what is tahajjud salat on his face some amazing noor becomes apparent and also his grave will never ever be dark. His difficulties would become easy and in his dunya all darknesses he will be granted salvation from it. Whether it is the darkness of trials, difficulties or it is that of worries and challenges. Fitan. So all of this year is achieved when? When a person is in khalwat and he is alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in tahajjud, what happens? It is a means of riyadat, a spiritual exercise, purification of the internal. And it is the means of a person gaining high stages and he crosses so much of the path in this time. You certainly have intensive and important work, meaning of Dawat and Tabligh, propagating Islam during the day. And you will, be, you will be unable to devote your attention exclusively for the worship uh, during the day. The night is therefore uh, best for this purpose. So Allah Ta'ala then says, وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا Mention the name of your Rabb, meaning engage in dhikr. وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا And when doing this, cut yourself off from everything of this world and focus your attention solely on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا so when, when you remember 
the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do it in the form of tasbih and tahmeed. And you cut off yourself from all type of chores, works, this, that and the other. And you become solely uh, dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cut yourself with all connections of the world. And a person at this time will, can't even say to himself, how will I then uh, live and pass my time in this dunya? Why? Because Rabbul Mashriqi wal Maghrib, he is the Rabb of the East and the West. Allahu Akbar. He is the Rabb of the East and the West. La ilaha illa huwa fattakhidhu wakila. There is no ilah but him. So adopt him as your karsas, as your guardian for none other can safeguard you, none other can uh, protect you. And in the world, every corner of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. He's the Rabb of the East and the West. That Rabb who sees to the needs of every makhluk in the entire uh, dunya. So when a person does this year, he cuts everything from the dunya and he turns himself solely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the nafs. This year is something which is difficult and a lot of obstacles and challenges comes in front of a person just like how came in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after he was granted a prophethood. The mushrikeen of Makkah troubled him, hurt him, they told him unsavory things. And then the, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gave uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam such a great consolation wasbir ala ma yaqulun patiently bear whatever they the kuffar say they say this year to insult you and when they become unbearable then listen wahjurhum hajran jamila separate from them in the most pleasant manner meaning not with a fight you, you, you're not going to separate with them by fighting with them. Meaning you're going to separate in such a manner without a fight, without a desire for revenge. Allahu Akbar. Without a fight and without a desire for revenge. With no hatred in your heart, no anger. وَذَرْنِي وَالْمُكَذِّبِينَ أُولِي النَّعْمَةِ وَمَهِّلْهُمْ قَلِيلًا وَذَرْنِي Leave me to deal with the rejectors. وَذَرْنِي وَالْمُكَذِّبِينَ أُولِي النَّعْمَةِ Which people? They reject Iman who are blessed with the bounties of this world. And Allah Ta'ala grant them grace for a little while. Meaning, bears with them until they learn their lesson the hard way. Inna ladayna ankala wa jahima. Verily, we have in store for them in Jahannam handcuffs and the blazing fire. So we have handcuffs, chains, and the blazing fire. Such food and and blazing fire there. وَطَعَامًا ذَا غُصَّةِ وَعَذَابًا أَلِيمًا Food that gets stuck in the throat cannot be swallowed because of its terrible taste and texture and a painful punishment. A painful punishment. Such a painful punishment with snakes and scorpions so poisonous that even if they spit their venom and it has to land on a boulder, it will reduce it and render it, make it dust. And this punishment will take place when and how and where? يَوْمَ تَرْجُفُ الْأَرْضُ يَوْمَ تَرْجُفُ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ وَكَانَتِ الْجِبَالُ كَثِيبًا مَهِيلًا On the day of Qiyamah, the earth and mountains will shake. Shiver and quake. 
the earth and the mountains, and the mountains will be reduced to a heap of dust. وَكَانَتْ يَوْمَ تَرْجُفُ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ وَكَانَتِ الْجِبَالُ كَثِيبًا مَهِيلًا So let's continue. So the Akhirat we have to keep in front of us. We have to make muraqaba and meditate death. In fact, from all muraqabas and types of uh, meditation, the most important of the lot is that of meditation of death. Today is the day of Jum'ah. Allah Ta'ala keep us all with afiyat. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had such a natch, uh, just naturally, he had such a type of a fear when the day of Jum'ah would come, uh, meaning that he would be overwhelmed thinking that this could be now Qiyamat, although he had, Allah Ta'ala gave him all the knowledge that Qiyamat will come after such such signs, etc. So on the day of Jum'ah, look at the Sahaba. The Sahaba were first in poverty and then they went to riches and wealthiness. Makkah Mukarrama was the place of mujahada and sacrifice. And Medina Munawwara is when things became easier and they started witnessing uh, the great bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mushahada where they were started seeing the fruits of their sacrifices that were carried out in uh, Makkah Mukarrama. So, look after yourself and your time. Just saying, one Subhanallah, and this, as Amara Muhammad Ahmad Saab used to say, the reward of it is so great that this entire world cannot contain the reward of one Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Every but and every small, even how small it is, ta'at, an act of obedience is a means of proximity to Allah. And every disobedience to Allah, no matter how small it is, it is a means of gaining, uh, uh, going further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah speaks about Surah Qiyamah in the Quran. Such, uh, I mean a whole Surah dedicated to Qiyamah, Allahu Akbar. Allah Ta'ala speaks about Qiyamah in another surah. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُبِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُجِّرَتْ وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُطِّلَتْ وَإِذَا الْوُحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّفُوسُ زُوِّجَتْ وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us all khair and barakat. Allah bless us with the nur of iman and Allah bless us with the treasure and the wealth of yaqeen. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'u al-alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta at-tawabu al-rahim. Bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.